Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelorette Recap, a guy's review. And we've got our finale review today. As you know, I take notes, read them back to you. No edits, no jump cuts, just me, you, and our thoughts as this dumpster fire is slowly put out. What a wild, wild episode we had last night. We've got this and so much more to get into today. Follow me on Instagram at D Niels, and I'm also going to be live on Patreon, our behind-the-scenes content, at patreon.com slash Dave Neal. We'll have more on the feature teacher of the day in the next video, but right now, let's jump right into this finale. There it is, the old Neil Lane ring. Never seen a finale start sharing so much disappointment. Jesse Palmer literally opened the show like a disappointed dad. He's like, look, we wanted to find love, but boy, did my boys let me down. Let me get into it. Gabby and Rachel both go down to their final choices. Jesse asks, will it end in happiness or all go terrible? wrong and the producers are like we choose violence Eric, uh, metaphorically. Eric tells Gabby if they were to end right now, he would be destroyed. He says he just wants to leave with her. He says he never expected this. And it's like, like we know. We've read the text. He's like, I never thought this was real. We're like, we get it. Uh, look, the Eric and Gabby stuff, it, it seems like it was all fabricated. Like, they had their connection. That was going to end the way it did. But that's not the lead violence of the night. Meanwhile, Rachel tells Tino he is the only one left. She said, it's you. And watching Rachel watch this is brutal. They even cut away to her face probably because she was about to vomit. They're like, all right, we can't show this. This is going to, uh, you know, uh, sicken the user. I mean, because look, it was, it, was, uh, it, was, it was rough watching it. It was rough watching her watch it. Then we watch her dad watch. It was a whole mess. The women meet up after making their final choices. Rachel tells Gabby that Tino is the guy. Gabby was like, I was hoping you'd pick him. Yeah, you feel that way now? They are so happy for each other, and we're watching from the future saying, be careful. The fact that they are onto proposals within the first 20 minutes of the episode really shows what's about to happen. They, they were like, all right, get the proposals out of the way. We got some drama. Rachel's speech at proposals says she's madly in love with Tino. Tino says Rachel is at the center of his universe and their love is as real as can be we watch this seeing how foolish a three-week romance actually is right and uh, hey that's what it is he proposes she says yes for now all right Tino and Rachel ride away on a horse. Boy, did anyone else think this was really dangerous? She could have split her head open. She's leaning on one side. They're, they're riding on a horse on, like, tile floor. I was like, this could end really poorly. A little do we know, the, the, you know, if she fell off the horse, that would have been the most pleasant aspect of the show for them. Uh, maybe she'd get, like, uh, you know, uh, amnesia and not remember. All right, Rachel catches us up on the Tino story. She's talking in past tense. She's like, I truly thought I found my person. And everyone's like, Yikes. This ain't going to go well. Rachel says the relationship got rocky when the premiere started. All she wanted out of a partner is someone who would support her. And she felt she didn't have that. There's going to be so much to talk about regarding this storyline. I mean, just absolutely so much to talk about here. Um, Rachel tells Jesse that Tino cheated on her. Those are Rachel's words. Jesse warns us that it is rough. First day, Rachel will speak to Tino. So now we cut backwards to the first time Rachel confronts Tino after he says he cheated on her. He kissed somebody, and I don't know how that all... I don't know. Gabby says, shows up for emotional support to the safe house visit. Rachel tells Gabby they never called the engagement off. Okay, well, if, that, if that's true, then it's cheating. If they didn't call the relationship off and he kissed somebody else, that's cheating. Now it's up to Rachel to decide what she wants to do with the situation. Gabby says, honestly, Frick him, you don't deserve this. Tino shows up, yikes, he's got his journal in hand. Some people were hoping it was a Bible. He's going to need more than uh, than the good Lord behind him in this case. He's like, ladies, first. You know, he's like, all right, you can go first. And she's like, you want me to go first? And he's like, okay, all right, I'll start, I'll start. You know, you could tell right away it was loaded. He tells her that he kissed a girl and he liked it. Maybe she didn't have the cherry chapstick. I don't know how the lyrics go. Tino recites what Rachel said to him during premiere week. She said she can't do happy couples as they planned. Then he says Rachel asked him if he wanted to be the next bachelor. So he's got these receipts saying the way she was talking to him and then she responds horribly to his receipts being like, oh, is this what you're doing right now? Tino has this all written down in his book. Rachel refuses to go to therapy and also Rachel didn't want to wear the ring, I guess. I guess they were fighting. Th these are his accusations done to her. And we'll never know what really happened, guys. We've got uh, Tino, his journal, versus Rachel and her word. Rachel says, how dare you bring these receipts here without context? His defense, his defense is telling her that the kiss was a one-time thing. It's like, bro, you can't defend the kiss. 
right? The kiss is indefensible, so move on past that. But he he clearly wants to explain himself because he feels like in some way he was driven to that, I guess. I don't know. That part's indefensible. What comes after that, we can have a conversation about. He walks out, tries to take his mic off. He's truly panicking. The whole thing's going down. And um, she's giving her fantasy sweet face, which unfortunately, you know, when, when a face like this is made, um, it's one or two things. And Tino got the wrong end of the stick on this one. And you could say she did as well. Gut-wrenching to watch both of them. Tino, uh, you know what I mean? That's an oh my God oh my jokes. God. Tino comes back inside. He asks Rachel what she wanted out of this. And she says she wanted answers. She deserves answers. You can't handle the truth. And so that's what she wanted, his answers. Um, Tino says he doesn't want to excuse his actions. He wants to own them. He says he was under the impression they were done. Rachel went to therapy. Tino tried to forgive himself. Rachel responds, do you hear the words coming out of your mouth? Tino steps out again, making these camera guys work overtime. Rachel walks outside. Tino has his shirt off, probably tried to remove his mic again. Pray for the sound guy. They're, you know, they're getting paid overtime. He's like, I got paid to put the, the mic on his chest once. Now you want me to use extra double stick tape? You're going to have to charge for this. Tino cries and tells Rachel that they can make it through this, says he would spend the rest of his life making up for it. I swear, I just want you. Rachel says, I'm done. The audience cheers. She hands him back the ring. Tino says, you deserve somebody who doesn't do this. But I did, and I let you down. Then Tino exits through the alleyway. Back to the live audience, you could hear a pin drop. Rachel says she doesn't think he's sorry. She says it's heartbreaking to watch. Jesse asks if she still loves Tino. She says she has love for him, but no. And again, then, I don't think I mentioned this part, but um, Rachel had mentioned that Tino sent her a letter. I mean, look. I don't know. I like to take people at their word. He said he's sorry. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean she has to forgive him, but she. It almost sounds like, it, like he said he's sorry. You can now move on. You can accept his apology or not. That's on her what she wants to do with it. But the whole rest of the conversation is just ugly in my head. Jesse asks Tony how hard it is as a father. He says he's there to um, stand up for everything that Rachel says and does. Jesse asks Caitlin Bristow in the audience what she thinks, and she says, you owe him nothing. I'm so fired up for you. I'm so proud of how you handled everything. Uh, and it's on, as an aside, this is where I kind of saw this as like, did we, like, I understand they do this in front of a live audience. No therapist in the world will tell you this is a good idea because you're performing for others, right? You're going to try to win over the crowd versus have an honest conversation. Chances are it's more complicated. You know, if everyone wants to place the blame 100% on Tino, you can for the cheating, but for the fights and everything else, the blame's got to be 30, 70, 60, 40, 55, 45. It takes two to tango, baby. So we don't know what led up to that. The cheating is wrong. Absolutely. But what led up to that with regards to the topics they didn't want to discuss? I've got no idea. But you'd think it's a little bit more complicated than that. Tino shows up for the live chat, gets some applause and some booze. He says his actions are in him and he owns it completely. He apologizes and says he was just trying to provide context. So that's where it goes off the rails again. He... Gets the credit for apologizing and saying, look, I own it. I apologize. I'm so sorry. You know, X, Y, and Z. Then he, and I, and I empathize with wanting to explain. You ever been in a fight and you're like, listen, honey, I know what I did was wrong. I know that you feel the way you do. I just want to let you know why I thought I was doing the right thing. Obviously with Tino, when it comes to kissing someone else, there is no doing the right thing. And yet at the same time, look, we're on the TV show. We want to hear what he has to say. We're going to have so much more to talk about with all of this in more videos today. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're just going to barrel through this aspect right now. He says his actions are on him. She says, how is there a why though? He says she didn't. It's like, look, there's a why because it's a live TV show. That's why there's a why, you know, in real life, he might have just apologized. She would have called him an a-hole to her friends at brunch and they would have never talked again. But on the TV show, th this there's a what there's a mic pack. We want to hear what he has to say. He says she didn't deserve what he did. We know that. He says he was just trying to enlighten to her as to why he was in the headspace he was in. He says when he told when she told him she couldn't wear the ring, he let his ego and insecurities get the best of him. I think I mean I think that's better than just thinking someone cheated on you because they don't love you enough. He's like, no, it's about me. As we saw with the Adam Levine Levine, Levine story yesterday, Leviathan story yesterday, he was married to a Victoria's Secret model and he still was dicking around. It's about insecurities, about insecure with who you are and your own issues.
Avon shows up. Tino's still sitting on the couch. Everyone cheers for Avon. Rachel's shaking her head like, no, you didn't have to do that. Avon asks Rachel if she would like to catch up. The audience goes wild. Tino stands there. He's like, am I good? Jesse says, this is live TV. And of course, Jesse keeps a cheery face on. But we have to remember, this was Tino's fiance at one point in the near past. And um, we're going to have more on this aspect of the finale as plenty of people are enraged, including highly up uh, you know, alumni from the show that said this is just absolute brutal to Tino. This is unfair. We'll get more into that. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. So Jesse and Gabby's turn. Rachel bounces, bounced with Avon. Gabby and, and then and Jesse's like, it's live TV. Anything can happen. And as we know, hours earlier, Reality Steve had dropped that spoiler that Avon was going to do that. So even though it was quote unquote live TV, it was also quote unquote scripted AF. All right. Uh, back, uh, Gabby and Eric back in Mexico. Let's go to them. Eric proposes. She says yes. She says yes. She's glowing. So are things still good? That's the big question. Back at the live show, Eric enters. They smooch. Clearly they are strong. Grandpa John shows up, refuses to be the bachelor. Gabby says it's hard being in the bubble while waiting for the reveal. Jesse asks Eric about his ex. Eric responds, says he met his ex a month before the relationship. Uh... He knew it wasn't a long-term connection. Says he led her on. He took the easy way out. He didn't want the hard conversation. He made a mistake. Jesse mentions the text and airs it. Aren't we shocked that they aired this part? Eric says he was taking the cowardly way out. He used the show as an excuse to not have the difficult conversation. Eric says what changed is that he met Gabby the first night. He says he loves Gabby with all his heart and wants it to be forever. And then we'll have more on that in a later video today. Gabby tells Eric that he told her about the text messages before they were leaked. And Gabby says, you are kind of an a-hole. And that's amazing that we have Gabby there able to hold her man accountable to whatever extent is possible. Gabby says she wants a partner who can take accountability, uh, which I think is in most cases, you don't want a perfect partner. You want someone who can understand what they've done wrong and pledge to do better moving forward. That sounds like the right idea, right? So anyway, uh, Grandpa John says he's tickled pink for Gabby and Eric. Uh, and we love Grandpa John. The next Bachelor announcement, welcome Zach, Bachelor 2023. Zach says he's hoping to find and fall in love with his best friend, there's old Zachy boy. Z uh, Jesse brings it on Zach that he uh, springs it on Zach that he's going to start his new season tonight. We meet Brooklyn from Texas, Brianna from New Jersey. There's Brianna right there. Um, Bailey from Tennessee on the daily. I'm going to think I'm going to be thinking of Bailey cat dancer from New York city and Christina from Tennessee. First impression Rose goes to goes from America to Brianna. So America voted on the first impression Rose and Brianna got it. Of course, very smooth selfie moment. They took the photo. She put it in his shirt pocket. So she's safe on night one. We know who the first impression Rose is. Let me know what you guys think of this very busy recap. I'll be live on Patreon 10 a.m. this morning to discuss the behind the scenes uh, in most authentic version of what the hell went down last night. Go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal for more of that content. I will see you all in a little bit. Bye, everybody.